This weekend, there will be major events to commemorate the centenary of the armistice when the First World War came to an end on the 11th of November 1918. As part of the commemorations, tens of thousands of shrouded figures are being displayed at London's Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. They're called Shrouds of the Somme, some 72,000 tiny figures, each representing a Commonwealth serviceman who died in that battle but with no known grave. Events are also taking place in Germany where that country's fallen soldiers in two world wars are being remembered. DAR special correspondent Alan Little reports on how today's democratic Germany tries to reconcile itself uh, to the darkness of its past. 70 years ago, the German army came to Norway by force. Today, they are here by invitation. This is the biggest NATO operation since the end of the Cold War. 40,000 troops from 29 nations, and the Germans are at its heart. In war paint and forest camouflage, this is Germany today, a nation transformed in two generations from murderous dictatorship to democratic partner. But how do today's Germans remember their dead of two world wars, when in the 1940s they died serving the Nazi regime? Many of them fought under Field Marshal Erwin Rommel. I asked one of his relatives how Germans could mourn their dead without whitewashing Germany's crimes. I was told um, when I was a young girl not to talk about the war. Many talked about it, but just behind their hands that their uncles or grandfathers or brothers died because we always were told that we are guilty and we are guilty we are more guilty than the others but my generation wasn't guilty or is not guilty because i was born after the war i don't want to cut it down no? <laughs> do you say cut it down well, to make it small but but uh, i think one day there must be uh, an end of all these stories for a hundred years, visitors have come to Allied war cemeteries with pride, as well as sorrow, to honour the generation that delivered Europe from German militarism and dictatorship. Two million German soldiers also died in the First World War, more than twice that number in the Second. Many lie in mass graves, no shining white upright stones for them. Posterity feels no pride in the Germany they died for. And now they are coming out of the church, yeah. My father and my mother. My Peter Fliesbach was born on Armistice Day 1944. His parents were married in February that year, his father in the uniform of an army on the verge of a catastrophic defeat. The end of the Second World War was so hard that the feelings of guiltiness was in them, but they couldn't speak about this thing that they followed Hitler. It was, that was a big problem for the generation of my father and my mother. When this home movie was filmed, they didn't yet know that their part of Germany would soon be overrun by Soviet troops. This is my grandfather, Fliesbach. <laughs> Peter's grandfather, a local landowner, would not survive. The Russians came and then, after a few days, they decided uh, to kill the four four men of, of, uh, in the house. Then my grandfather said to my grandmother, we have now to say goodbye. And then he went down. <laughs> One moment. This private sorrow is still very powerfully felt, but it rarely finds public expression. There is a small national ceremony that takes place here in Berlin every November, but it's very low-key and it's over in a matter of minutes. For after the Second World War, German sorrow got subsumed by something much bigger, national shame. Germans had inflicted so much grief on others that they found it impossible to publicly indulge their own grief. They kept it private, unspoken. There is no German equivalent of this. In their Nordic training grounds, what fellowship do these men and women feel with those who came before them? If Britain's history is about continuities, Germany's is about rupture, the clean break of 1945. The end of the Second World War was 
for our society, for our culture, a ground zero. This ground zero for our history, for our society, um, change our society, change our mind setting, our whole culture. For this ability to getting better, to learn from the history, I am proud to be German and be proud to serve for Germany. This is the post-war German achievement, that if the country's ancestral voices call from their graves this Armistice Day, today's Germany is not listening. Alan Little, BBC News. Now on Sunday, the nation will pause for the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day and reflect on the sacrifices made by those who lost their lives in the First World War. Well, almost every community in our country was affected by the conflict, but a handful of villages that became known as the Thankful Villages escaped without any loss of life. This weekend, a village in Staffordshire is celebrating double thankful status because everyone who left to fight in both world wars returned safely. With the remarkable story, here's our Staffordshire reporter, Liz Copper. Nestling on the edge of the Peak District, the Staffordshire village of Butterton. It has a church, a pub and a post office, but there's no war memorial here. That's because all the men who left to fight during both world wars came home safely and that will be celebrated. We will be rejoicing in the fact that all our men returned and that makes us doubly thankful. Um, but we are fully aware that neighbouring villages will be having their services to remember their fallen. This picture was taken in 1919 and shows the men of Butterton who returned from the battlefields. Among their number is Arthur Poyser. He saved the life of his best friend, Charlie Birch, and received a medal for his gallantry. Steve Cooper is Arthur's grandson. He has mementos of his grandfather's service. Well, he never spoke about it. He was a very private man. Uh, the bits we got were, were usually from when him and Charlie were, were together. So I think it, it makes me very proud and, and really, I wish I'd asked him more. I want to know more about it, so I've got to do more research. So it spurs me on, really, to find out as much as I can about him. Bell ringers at the village church are practising for the celebratory service on Sunday. The bells were recently renovated and reinstated after being silent for 25 years. At the weekend, they'll ring out again for three hours across the surrounding countryside. It allows you know, people who aren't able to come to the church, for instance, to be able to take part in the sense of celebration when they hear the bells ringing out. All around, people will be able to just stop and think, and they'll know what the bells are ringing for in celebration. This village is one of only a few with this special status, and on Armistice Day, they'll be giving thanks and honouring the lives of all those who made sacrifices. Now, we have reported a lot on this programme about the after effects of combat on the mental health of military veterans. It has become an affliction of our age. Well, today, the Ministry of Defence set out new plans to support veterans who are suffering. That help clearly can't come soon enough. Their wounds are usually hidden. They are the men and women who have served their country and in the line of duty suffered mental trauma that returned home with them. These are just a few of those whose stories ITV News has highlighted. For a frightening number, the story ends with a desperate decision to take their own lives. It was to halt the disturbing increase in veteran suicides and the torment suffered by too many members of our military and their families that the Ministry of Defence announced its latest spending on mental health. Only this week, Joe Jukes led mourners at the funeral of her husband, Lance Corporal Dave Jukes, who took his own life after years battling post-traumatic stress disorder. She told me the additional £10 million simply isn't enough. It sounds a lot to most people, but the, the problem is huge. And it's not, it's not enough. It, there needs to be more money, there needs to be more work at helping people to understand veterans, helping people to understand what PTSD is. What is proposed, funded by £10 million of extra spending announced in last week's budget, includes new money for projects that improve mental health, a new outreach service that will proactively call veterans to check on their well-being and needs, and a new support group for bereaved families, 
providing help for those who've lost someone through suicide. Before taking his own life, Dave Jukes, who served in Iraq, Afghanistan and Bosnia, tried to get help from many of the organisations that will receive government money. They failed him, his widow says, a new approach is needed. The most help we've had is from the smaller charities that help um, veterans and they're run by the veterans. So I think, if anything, the money would be better given to them. One of the best known military charities says the strategies to stop this tragic loss of life require more funding. What we need is to have an official case person um, allocated to a family so that the family knows that person and that person stays with them. Um, that needs resources because at the moment I don't think that the current systems, either the NHS's systems or indeed our own, because our own services are now increasingly, we need public support to continue them. They're not well enough funded yet. To underline the need, in the week of Lance Corporal Dave Duke's funeral, veterans groups say another six of their number have taken their own lives. Paul Davis, News at 10, Birmingham. Well, to memories of servicemen from another era now and Sunday's centenary of the end of the First World War. At the Remembrance Service in Whitehall, the German president will be the first leader of his country to lay a wreath at the Cenotaph, a special gesture of reconciliation on this historic anniversary. It is one that along the Western Front has a different kind of resonance for the people of Germany. In war, the victors write the history, they also bury the dead. The German dead on the Western Front lie in their own cemeteries, but they're nothing like the Commonwealth war graves. When German leaders mourn their lost generation here in Flanders at the main cemetery at Langemark, they come to a place of mass burial, up to 20 in a single grave, without headstones or crosses. The Belgian government, after the Second World War, uh, laid down severe restrictions on the Belgian cemeteries. They were told to keep change them and make them as low-key as possible. Now you could actually drive right past this cemetery and you wouldn't even know it was here. 25,000 have been buried in this single mass grave in the centre of the cemetery, their names marked only on the row of plinths that surround it. Commonwealth cemeteries, on, on, on the headstones you have uh, ranks, you have service numbers, you have uh, full names, you have regiments, you have ages. If you look on the bronze plaques here, you just have the soldier's name his function and his date of death. And each one of these is a mother's son in the same way. Each one has family somewhere. Even today they have family down the line somewhere. Private Johann Spies, just one of those names, has family down the line. Killed near Ypres in 1917, aged 38. He only saw his youngest daughter once when home on leave. That daughter's son, Helmut Zira, has kept his grandfather's memory alive with a book and newspaper articles. As a schoolboy, he was never taught about the First World War, the horrors of the Western Front, in the way British and French schoolchildren were, and believes that this failure of collective memory led directly to the next great conflict. In my history lessons, I was lied to and betrayed, he said, not only myself, but my generation. That's the worst thing. And that's why Hitler came about. The lessons were ignored, and that's what really annoys me. And that may be the lesson. If victors don't honor the enemy dead as they do their own, if the defeated see in the sacrifice of their soldiers disgrace rather than pride, the seeds of future war can lie ready to germinate all over again. James Mates News at 10 at the German Cemetery in Langemark.